This is Katherine Nightingale of Chattanooga State Community College, and this video is for linear algebra on the topic of the null space of a matrix A. By definition, the null space of matrix A, abbreviated null A, is the set of all solutions to the equation AX equals zero. Now recall from previous sections that we can find the set of all solutions to this equation by row reducing the, reducing the augmented matrix and writing our solution in parametric vector form. To practice this skill, please look back at section 1.5 if you have questions. Now first, we want to know how to determine if a vector is in the null space of A. <clears throat> so for example, say we have matrix A, negative 4, 2, 2, negative 1, 3, 6, and vector U equal to 1, 2. And we want to know, is that vector in the null space of A? Now by definition, U is in the null space of A, if AU equals the zero vector. So all we have to do is check. We're going to multiply A times U, so I do my matrix times my vector, and I always put the matrix on the left hand side because remember matrix vector multiplication does not commute. So I put my matrix on the left, my vector on the right, and my vector is the weights for the columns of A, so I get one times the first column of A, plus 2 times the second column of A, and I add up straight across so I get the result 0, 0, negative 9. Now you can see from looking at this that this is not the zero vector, and because of this we say that AU is not equal to the zero vector, so U is not in the null space of A. So anytime you're asked to determine if a vector is in the null space of A, just multiply it by the matrix, and if it equals zero, it is in the null space. If it does not equal zero, then it is not in the null space. Now, remember the null space of A is the set of all solutions to AX equals zero. If A is an M by N matrix, then the null space of A is going to be a subspace of Rn. So notice this is determined by the number of columns of A. The reason for this is because the number of columns will determine how many variables our system has. So if there are n columns, then there are n variables in the equation Ax equals zero. That means that all the solutions will be n-tuples. So we, if we look at this from a matrix size standpoint, we know that if we have a matrix A and a vector X, that the number of columns of A has to equal the number of rows of X in order for that multiplication to be defined. So the null space is always a subspace of R to however many columns your matrix has. Alright, next skill, finding a vector in the null space of A. In order to find a vector in the null space of A, we want to solve the system AX equals zero. So for example, say we have matrix A equals one, two, three, 0, 1, negative 1, and we're asked to find a non-zero vector, x, in the null space of A. So I'm going to solve Ax equals 0. So I set up my augmented matrix, I row reduce, and now I'm going to um, write my solution. So I see that there's no pivot in the third column, so x3 is free. Now I'm going to write my solution. So I have from row 1, I have x1 plus 5x3 equals 0. And from row 2, I have x2 minus 1x3 equals 0. 
Now this will give me the solution x1 equals negative 5x3, x2 equals 1x3, and x3 equals 1x3. So we just always set the free variable equal to itself. Now to find a single vector in the null space of A, so a single solution to AX equals 0, I pick a value for the free variable. If I have more than one free variable, I pick a value for each one. So for example, I'm going to say x3 equals 1, and that gives me the solution x equals negative 5, 1, 1. So my claim is that this is a solution to ax equals 0, and so it's in the null space of A by definition since the null space is just all solutions to ax equals 0. I can check by actually multiplying a times x and making sure it comes out to be the 0 vector. So I found a solution and I checked it and I'm done. Now let's go one step further and find a basis for the null space of A. So this means I'm finding the linearly independent set of vectors that spans all the solutions of AX equals 0. My process is to start by finding all solutions of AX equals 0 because this is by definition the null space. Next, I'll write the solutions in parametric vector form, and the vectors will form a basis for the null space of A. Here's our example, finding a basis. So let A be the same matrix that we used in our column space video. A equals 3, negative 1, 7, 3, 9, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 7, 5, negative 5, 9, 3, 3, 4, and negative 2, 6, 6, 3, 7. So we have this 4 by 5 matrix, and we want to find a basis for the null space of A. Okay, I'm going to the, go to the next slide and row reduce my augmented matrix. So I start with the augmented matrix for AX equals 0 and row reduce. You can do this using your calculator. And remember that each column is associated with a variable. So I have x1 through x5. And I'm, I pick out my pivots. I have a pivot for column 1, column 2, and column 4. So that means that columns 3 and 5 are representing free variables. x3 and x5 are free. Now I want to write the solution. So from row 1 I have x1 plus 3x3 plus 5 halves x5 equals 0. Row 2 gives me x2 plus 2x3 plus 3 halves x5 equals 0. And now x3 is free, so I'm just going to write x3 free. Row 3 gives me x4 plus 1x5 equals 0. And then x5 is free also, so I just write a note to myself that it's free. Now I'm going to solve for each variable. I want to get x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 as a solution. So x1 is negative 3x3 minus 5 halves x5. x2 is negative 2x3 minus 3 halves x5. x3, since it's free, I just set it equal to itself. x4 is equal to negative 1x5, and x5 is equal to 1x5. It's free, so it gets set equal to itself. <laughs> and I fill in the rest with zeros. So now what will happen is this will give me my two vectors in parametric vector form. So my first vector will be multiplied by x3, my second vector will be multiplied by x5. 
So write down this solution and then we'll go to the next slide. So from that solution, I get that my solution is equal to my x3 times negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0 plus x5 times negative 5 halves, negative 3 halves, 0, negative 1, 1. Now this represents all solutions to ax equals 0. And we know that x3 and x5 are scalars, meaning they're real numbers. And so a basis for the null space of A is negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0 as my first vector, and negative 5 halves, negative 3 halves, 0, negative 1, 1 as my second vector. When I'm writing the basis, I do not write the scalars because remember a basis is the set of vectors that spans our space. So it's understood that every element of the space will be a linear combination of those two vectors.